So, Mr. Bergman, I, you know, you've been doing all these new career explorations. I really haven't gotten to do that. So uh, I, I've decided I'm going to become Mr. A, Sam? a poet. A poet? Yes, a poet. No way. Yes, this chemistry you, is enough for me. You, you, you don't think I should be all those things, a musician? Oh, no, uh, you know, you found a few things that have worked yeah, for you. But I, I, I'd like yeah. to do a little exploring myself here. So, okay. you know, poetry. So, poetry, really? You know, most poets, they write about what they know, and I know about chemistry. So poetry. I've got some chemistry poems I'd like poetry to read Poetry with you. chemistry themes? I, I'm with yes. that, yeah. Okay, okay. so here, this is my first one here. It's called Ode to Little Susie. Ode to Little Susie. Uh, little Susie oh, was a chemist. Little Susie is no more. For what she thought was H2O was really H2SO4. Ah, I'm dying. Because that was, yeah, sulfuric acid. All right, I have, I have another one. This one's a limerick. I like limericks. Okay. Chlorine, chloride, chlorate. I can't keep all of you straight. You're out of my reach. Hypochlorite is bleach. Naming compounds is that which I hate. What do you think? That was weak. Weak? Like oh, a weak on. acid. Oh, yeah. ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hypochlorite. Uh, hypochloric acid would be a weak so acid. So I can be the poet and you can be a, a comedian. Yeah, well, you know, you know, I was trying to keep, keep up with yeah, you Yeah, speaking of weak acids and bases, that's oh. what we're going to be talking about here. We so got, should we talk about some we weak acids and bases? We should probably do that, yeah. Yeah, we'll okay. Do some more poems hey, later. before we do that, actually, before, as we do that, we need to learn that there are different ways to define acids and bases. There are. And so, um, actually, before we do that, we should talk about the properties of acids and bases, since that's yep. our first slide. Yeah. Okay, hey, what do you know about acids? Well, I know they're sour. Oh, they taste yeah, sour. Yeah, that's what they, they put in, like, this Laffy Taffy I'm about to eat I here. did, did. Yeah. There's they probably some uh, acid that make it sour. sour. Okay, and bases, you know what they taste? They taste like coffee, because they're bitter. They're bitter, yep. yeah. Yeah. Malic yeah. acid. That's what's in my laughter tapping to make it shower. He's eating Malik food acid. and trying to talk at the same time. Yeah, didn't did your well. mother tell you not to do that? No, nah, she did. It's sour. What else do you know about acids? Um, well, let's see. It, if I touch it, it's corrosive and it'll burn, eat through my hand. Not really burn, but give me a chemical burn. And bases are also corrosive. Yeah, they're also, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes even worse so on your body than acids. In fact, the other thing about bases that, that you could also say, they're also slippery. They are. If you touch them, they feel slippery. Now, I can't confirm this 100%, but I've been told at chemistry teacher seminars that it's because they're turning the oils in your fingers into soap, actually. It's called saponification, where it takes the, the fat in your finger and it breaks it down and turns it into a soap. Again, I don't know 100%, but that's what I've been told. So I have to to research that. Yeah, those out in the Internet land, you'll have to correct us if we're wrong. Yeah. Okay, I don't know for sure. I, I had not heard that. That's pretty cool. Yep. Um, what is the key chemical that makes acids acids? Um, hydrogen ions. H the presence. positive. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is very important. It's not hydrogen. It's hydrogen ions. It must have this positive charge. Do not write H2. Do not write H. It is H with a positive charge. And then bases are hydroxide. The hydroxide. You know, something that um, I should chat about real quickly here. I don't know if you understand this, but um, you have a tongue. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. That's Blah. a tongue. That's your tongue, and I'm picking my tongue Blah. out and talking to you. All right, so that's the tongue. And back here in the back, this is what you can taste. What did you know, Mr. Sam? your biology guy. Well, you know that's this. where the highest concentration of bitter receptors are. Yeah. You actually have them all over your tongue. Yeah. But the little map of your tongue is where you see where they typically are concentrated more. So. Here on the outsides, uh, you have the sour t uh, taste buds. Now, you're right. It's, it's oversimplification to say that they're in one place. But the whole, here's the point. What is it the sour taste bud detecting? Sour taste buds are detecting hydrogen ions. So right. when they're there, that's why it tastes sour. Because they go, oh, look, H pluses. There must be an acid present. I'm going to send a signal in the brain that says sour, sour. You see, I have, just to give you a perspective, understand what this sort of means. At my house, I have a, car a it's called a carbon monoxide detector. Mm -hmm. It is designed to protect my family in the case of carbon monoxide coming from my furnace and, like, you know, gassing us to death. And so um, all day long, it's sniffing, if you will, or trying to detect a particular chemical, carbon monoxide. Right. All day long, that's all it does. Yep. Guess what the sour taste buds do on your tongue? They're looking for hydrogen ions. That's all, all day they do. long, all night long, it's looking for hydrogen ions. And whenever one comes, it becomes super sour and you can't talk because it's ooh, I got stuck in a lemon or whatever. And uh, uh, conversely, the bitter taste buds are doing the exact same thing, except they're not detecting hydrogen ions, but 
hydroxide ions. And there's actually uh, some other things they look for as well that look for bitter things. So looking for things that contain nitrogen yeah. and um, some other complexes of nitrogen. And we'll talk about later why things with nitrogen tend to be basic. Yeah, it's not just hydroxide. It's any kind of basic yeah. substance. And it's a little more complex than that. But that's kind of a, gives you a perspective on that. Yep. Anything else? We could probably talk about uh, indicator colors. Oh, yeah. This turns uh, phenothaline. Colorless. Acids make phenothaline colorless. And the reason we throw up phenothaline in there is that you use it all the time in acid base titrations. And, and phenothaline becomes pink. Oh, I should use in the a base. Pink oh, yes, ink? you probably the should. The pink ink. Yes. I'm a poet. A pink, pink ink. ink. You know, that shows up in one of my son's the books. Pink ink. Yeah. Um, well also, there's a sec another one. We'll just continue to add this. There's a bromothymol blue, BTB. BTB. And for an acid, of course, it is uh, Is yellow. it blue? Oh, it is yellow. Okay. I was going to mix it up which way it goes. And for a base, it's... It's blue. Blue. That's how I base blue. Base that's how I've always remembered that. That's good. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm pretty good about those things. I like so, that. Um, is there anything else we should talk about? Mm, um, nothing comes to mind. Oh, yeah. pH. Oh, yeah. yeah pH. pH. Um, and acids, of course, the pH. Acid pH is, is less than 7. It's less than 7. And the pH, of course, greater than greater 7 than for bases. Seven. Yeah. All right. And 7, of course, it's neutral. neutral. Okay. You probably know this. Okay. This is review. All right. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there are two, pardon me, three ways that we can define acids. Yep. There's the Arrhenius method. Old dead white guy, Arrhenius. Yep. Okay. And his acids were hydrogen ion donors. And we've talked about Arrhenius. No, no, that's Bronsted Lowry, Mr. Sams. Um, what? Yeah, that's... For acids? That's Bronsted Lowry. Aren't they both? No. I thought they had the same acid definition. No, they don't. They don't? No, Arrhenius basically well, hydrogen me. ion producers. What did I say? You said hydrogen donors. Oh, I see. And okay. bases make hydroxides. This is what we just talked about, essentially. Yeah. So if you have hydrogen ions, it's an acid. If it's a hydroxide ion, it's a base. That is called the Arrhenius definition of right. acid bases. Now we move to the second dude, actually two dudes, Bronsted and Lowry. They said that acids are... Hydrogen ion. Are actually proton... Or hydrogen ion. Yeah. Donors. Now, what do you mean? What do you say? I said proton, you said hydrogen ion. What's yeah. up with well, that? Well, it's the same thing. A hydrogen ion... Well, hydrogen atom is one proton and one electron. But a hydrogen ion, if it loses the electron, what do you have left? You just have a proton. So you see, if you lose an electron, ladies and gentlemen, from a hydrogen atom, it becomes a hydrogen ion, or H positive. Also called a proton. But because that's all because that's all that's left is actually the proton. So a proton and a hydrogen ion are the same thing. In fact, there's like a cool video that's called the proton in action or something like that. It's a really cool science mm. video. I'm sure you thought that was, sounded cool I to did. you. Protons but in action. Yeah, so protons in action or the something proton. I've lost it now. All right, they, pro, they donate protons. Or you might think hydrogen ion donor, okay? Bases are? Hydrogen ion or proton acceptors. So if I give you a hydrogen ion, you become a? I become a base because I'm accepting it. Okay. All right. And I donated it to you. That so would make acid. me an acid. Now, let's do some examples under this one particularly. Um, yeah, we probably should. I guess we do it later here, don't we? Yeah. Never mind. We'll go back to the Lewis thing, I think. Yep. All Lewis right. acids and Lewis bases. There's a guy by the name of Lewis. He's the same guy, by the way, who did the Lewis dot structures, if you recall, yep. from last year, which we will get back into later on in the year. But we don't need to worry about that at this time. They are a little bit different. They yeah. Are the Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. And then the base is the electron pair donor. What does that one. mean? Well, should we show them an example? I think we probably should. Yeah, let's do an example. Now, because Mr. Lewis was like the electron dot guy, yep. we draw draught structures. So if I take ammonia, which is NH3, which is a base, which yep. we'll discover in a minute, and I react it with, say, BF3, Boron trifluoride. And if you're looking at this going, why does boron only have six things coming off of it? It's because it can be electron deficient. It's okay like that. He's actually violating what you would call the octet rule. Yep. And he does not have enough um, electrons. He is unhappy, if you will. And if we then react these two together, you see the ammonia right here can donate his two electrons to the boron. I have usually called these the gluon reactions. They just glue together. Yeah. And you get BF3 
but you see boron wanted those two electrons, so they then lived between them, and the nitrogen... Um, they share them with a covalent bond. They share it in a covalent bond, and now we've made um, whatever this is called. It's yeah, complex. Big, giant. But that thing. makes sense. He g donated the electrons. He becomes the electron pair donor, which makes him a base, and he is the electron pair acceptor that makes him the acid. That's right. Actually, I should go back to one more thing on Bronsted-Lowry. How do you remember that Bronsted-Lowry base acceptor acid donor? How do you how do you how do you memorize that? Uh, I don't know anything clever. I just know them. Would you have something clever to show? Us, Mr. What Harvey? does a sheep say, Mr. Sheep? Sheep says, bah. Very close. My one-year-old babies know that. It's A sheep says, bad. Bad. Oh, okay. B-A-A-D. Maybe it's a goat. I don't know. Because the sheep point. say, bah, yeah, the point. goats are bad. So, I don't base, know. acceptor, acid, donor. Ah, bad. I like it. Is that pretty bad? That's pretty bad. Yeah, but Not quite as bad as this poem I'm going to read to you next. Oh, though. you have another poem? Yeah, this is my zinc limerick. The zinc they're, limerick. They're I, I used to have a teacher friend of mine who's a chemistry teacher. You know what his name was? Zinc? Mr. Zinc. Oh, you got to be kidding me. True story. I, there's a teacher in my high school. His name was Mr. Doctor. Mr. Doctor. That was kind of weird. Yeah, okay, here's the zinc okay. limerick. There once was a metal <laughs> named Zinc who got himself into a stink. Into acid he fell and reacted a spell, got dissolved, and then poured down the sink. Oh, <laughs> sink, zinc. It fits. It's like pink. It is. Pink ink sink. Pink ink sink. Yeah, I wrote dink. that, actually, by the way. All right. Zinc, zinc limerick. I didn't write the Little Susie, but I At wrote At one point, I used to limericks. be a dink. A what? I think oh, dual income, no kids? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah a those were those are the ago. days. Okay. We could go out to dinner and yes. like actually go on dates and stuff. Yeah, that didn't that happen. That doesn't happen much anymore. Okay, all right, okay. What is up with here now? Arrhenius. All right. Okay, these here. are definitions. These are just a reminder yep. of the definitions, and it's a good little uh, chart that I made. Yes, for you. it is. Okay, okay. Conjugate acid base concept. Um, we need to learn this. We're just going to do an example here. What if I have an acid, let's say acetic acid? I've given it away that's an acid. And it reacts with water. Water. And we've learned in our equilibrium unit just before this that um, there are a lot of chemicals uh, do this equilibrium thing. Mm -hmm. This then turns into, I want you to kind of watch this, the reaction is going to use this hydrogen is going to connect with the water right here. And it's going to make the ion H3O positive. And that's called the hydronium ion, if you remember. Plus acetate. You know what? We should talk about something else. So before we do that, I, mm -hmm. I want to jump back for just a second, back to our definition. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that one, one thing that we should say about, and you should just add this back in your notes, if I can find the right slide right here, is that technically it's, we say that our hydrogen ion uh, uh, producers and hydroxide ion producers or whatever, but technically what's going on with the hydrogen ion is it's actually the hydronium ion. There is actually no such thing as a hydrogen ion all by itself. What's actually true is that when the hydrogen ion comes into contact with water, it turns into hydronium ions. Yeah. And that's actually what makes the acid the acid. That's exactly what your tongue is tasting. But chemists are essentially lazy. And it, it reacts exactly the same way to talk about um, the hydrogen ion as opposed to the hydronium. So it works exactly the same way. But in this instance that we're working on right now, we do want to look at the hydronium ion. Yeah. Right? So that's just interesting. Now, primarily we're going to look at the Bronsted-Lowry definition, the Correct. proton donor, a hydrogen ion proton donor, et cetera. So in this case, the acid right here, the acetic acid is giving away, you can see by the purple line there, he is giving away his hydrogen to the water, so that makes him the acid. an acid. And but since the water is accepting it, the hydrogen ion acceptor would then be the base. So this is an instance where water is actually not considered neutral, but it will be acting as a base. And it can also act as an acid. But you see, since the hydrogen ion was given to the water, the water is now called the what? Uh, and when it became the hydronium ion, it becomes the conjugate acid. I, did I spell that right? Conjugate. conjugate. G-A-T-E. -E. Sorry about that. And then the one who uh, did not receive the hydrogen called... The conjugate base. The conjugate base. Yeah. Basically, you just look for which ones are kind of related. The base becomes the conjugate acid. The acid becomes the conjugate base. Yeah, the so these are like a hydrogen. pair. This right here and this are a pair. And then I'll change colors here. So this is one pair, and the other pair is the water and the hydronium, if you will. So the base and the conjugate acid and the acid and its conjugate base, they're like partners. You'll see it yeah. in a little bit later. Yeah, we call them conjugate acid-base pairs. Another example of one that a lot of people don't think about is w ammonia. NH3 can react with water. Now, I'm going to write water a little bit differently, you'll see. 
And these are both equilibrium reactions because they're weak acids and weak bases. And yep. these are going to make what's going to happen here is the water, uh, the, the hydrogen, the first hydrogen in the water, is going to connect with the ammonia and make ammonium. And then that leaves the hydroxide. hydroxide. So we can now label who's the acid, the base, and the conjugate yep. acid. Well, base, water gave up its hydrogen, so that's going to be our acid. And last time it worked as a base, and this time it's working as an